Hello everyone, our today's topic is neurophysiological process in clothing comfort. In our earlier talk, we have discussed the psychological aspects of clothing comfort, where we have tried to understand the various psychological aspects laws of psychophysics, where our uh, attitude, aesthetic comfort. So, all these things were related to psychological comfort. Okay. That is very important, because a comfortable fabric may not give ultimate pleasure, if it is psychologically uncomfortable. So, our today's discussion will be neurophysiological process in clothing comfort. So, what is neurophysiology? So, the neurophysiology is it is the branch of physiology and neuroscience that is connected with the study of functioning of nervous system. So, Basically, it is a whatever sensation our body receives, ultimately it, it goes through nervous system and brain, which actually sense. Now, neurophysiology is a different separate branch of physiology and neuroscience, but why do we need to understand neurophysiology, when we are trying to understand the clothing comfort. Because as we know that when we wear clothing, it actually it is in contact with our whole body and our body gets our signal through the contact with the skin, the fabrics in touch with the most of the part of the skin, it gives signal, some stimulus it gives and there are different receptors available in our skin and which gets signal and ultimately the signal goes to our brain and we get some feeling may be comfortable, may be uncomfortable. All these sensations which is received by our skin from the fabric may be in contact type sensation that is a touch tactile sensation may be of pressure, may be a prickle type sensation, may be itching, may be warm, cool. So, all different types of sensations we receive. Here we will discuss in detail various types of sensation we get from the fabric what are the factors which control this type of sensation, how our skin receives this uh, sensation through different uh, types of uh, receptors and how is it uh, transmitted to the body, uh, put out to the brain. Okay. So, ultimately our brain gives a signal, average signal of comfort. Okay. So, to understand the neurophysiology, we must know our skin, we are, because our skin is directly in contact with the clothing. So, our skin gets different types of sensations, like your it is a soft touch sensation, pricking sensation, okay, pain sensation warm sensation, 
cold senses and different types of senses and it, uh, it gets stimulus it receives and it sends through different types of sensors available inside the skin. Like this is thermoreceptor which receives whether the sensation is warm or cold, touch sensation may be Meissner Karpatskal one type of sensor mechanical sensor which uh, gets sensation of touch. It may not be sensing the pain, for pain there are different types of sensor, nocive receptors are there which actually sense the pain type sensors are may be due to heat, may be due to cold, may be due to other uh, object. Pressure sensations are there, Pessinian corpuscle which sense the pressure and all these receptors warm or cold receptors their locations are at different depth of the skin depending on their location they sense like like touch sensor which has to be at the surface and pain sensor which is at the depth. Okay. This all this phenomena we will uh, discuss. So, our hairy skin, our body is covered with most of the part is covered with the hairy skin and skin has got different layers. Okay. So, the topmost layer which is known as the its epidermis. So, this epidermis is the overlaying outer layer consists of several sub layers. The epidermis has got different sub layers, they have their different specific functions. So, if you talk the stratum basale, which is the bottom most deepest layer of epidermis, which is actually like which is growing layer, which is called okay. Malpighian layer, which actually is a pigment layer, color of skin and all this. Okay. Stratum spinosum, which are prickly cells are there. Okay. Stratum granulosum, it is a granular layer where our sensors are uh, can reach up to this point, okay, that layer, which actually like free nerve endings, we will discuss gradually. Up to this layer, sensor can reach, okay. Stratum lucidium above that and the topmost layer is stratum corneum which is actually con which consists of dead cell. Okay. So, these are the different layers of the epidermis. The topmost layer as we have discussed that is a stratum cornea, corneum this uh, layer is uh, it consists of the it is a, a dead cell okay. and uh, this is the basal it is a growing cell it is a which can grow and the nerve endings which are the sensors they can reach up to this point stratum granulosum okay. we will see in later. Okay. Then next layer up below the epidermis next layer is the it is a called dermis layer which consists of network of blood vessels different types of receptors mechanical receptors thermal receptors are there. Okay. Hair follicle okay. This is also one type of uh, receptors which actually sense the movement of hair. Okay. Sweat glands responsible for excretion of sweat and oil glands. Okay. So, this uh, dermis layer is most important layer for actually getting signal stimulus from outside. Beneath the dermis layer it is a there is a fatty tissues. Okay which actually sometime it gets uh, it uh, host the some pain sensors. Okay. Now, if you see the uh, schematic diagram as, as we have discussed the epidermis is the topmost layer and dermis which consists of different types of nerves, sweat gland here there is a fatty tissue and hair follicle okay. and oil glands are there which is responsible for 
excretion of oil in, into the body. Now, these are the detailed locations of uh, different types of receptors. The cornified layer is at the top, stratum corneum we have discussed, Malpighian layer this is a part of the epidermis we have discussed and you can see the nerve endings, it is a free nerve endings which reached above up to the epidermis. The free nerve ending can reach up to the epidermis which is very sensitive. Free nerve endings are responsible for heat and touch sensation also, even pain sensation, sensations. Now, these are the different types of nerve endings. This is a called free nerve endings and there are corpuscular nerve ending which has got specific shape. Okay. Uh, blood capillaries are there which actually are responsible to reach blood up to the skin. Okay. Then artery veins are there and hair follicle, this is hair follicle at the bottom, it wrapped around the hair root which sends the movement of hair. If our hair at the skin moves that is sensed by the hair follicle and which ultimately gives signal to the brain okay, through the through different processes and sweat glands are there. So, this is the different type of glands located in the epidermis and uh, dermis okay, and there is an opening sweat pores are there. So, depending on the body physiology our body generates sweat to keep our body temperature a constant and it to release the body heat this all these things we will discuss okay so the basic functions of our skin is first to protect from external stimuli like heat cold radiation so these are our bare skin but what our clothing does to help in protecting our skin. Like if it is heat, if it is too hot, our clothing has to reduce the level of heat coming from environment to the body. Similarly, for cold it has to protect. Okay. So, skin has to protect our internal body and our clothing has to protect our skin. So, this clothing need to work closely with the skin, otherwise skin may not be able to actually work properly at, at least at extreme environment. Similarly, to check our body fluid. So, our body fluid is transmitted through our skin in the form of sweat, sensible sweat or insensible sweat in the vapor form and again our clothing has to work very closely with skin. Suppose our skin our um, is uh, releasing sweat, but if the clothing blocks the sweat by imperme wearing impermeable clothing, so that total physiological process will get hindered. So, we will not feel comfortable. Then reception of stimuli like touch, pressure, heat, pain and that we get directly in when we the our clothing is in contact with the body. This is the basic function which actually it is directly very closely related with the clothing. Okay. And clothing gets gives direct this type of sensation of touch, it may be harsh may be soft this type of touch even clothing can give pressure if it is too tight it uh, actually restrict our body movement. So, this uh, touch heat pain so this function is very closely related with the clothing. Biochemical synthesis is one of the important functions of skin then metabolism and disposal of biochemical waste. Okay and clothing again has to work closely with the skin. Regulation of 
body temperature. So, if our body needs to hold the temperature, restrict the temperature body heat to flow out. So, that clothing has to do, it has to work with uh, very closely with it, otherwise our body temperature will uh, drop. Similarly, if our clothing cannot stop the radiative heat or from environment to come in, then our body temperature will go down. So, that body core temperature maintains, although physiology our body physiology works very nice to maintain the our body core temperature, but for extreme temperature zone, extreme uh, climatic condition, our clothing has to work closely with skin, controlling of blood pressure. So, that also is our function of one of the functions of the skin. Then comes to prevent penetration of noxious foreign material okay, and radiation. That is the function of basic function of skin, but again here clothing has to work closely with this. If that sensation is uh, or radiation is uh, harmful, then clothing has to do its function. Okay. Cushion against mechanical shock, for any mechanical shock our skin has to perform, it gives cushion, okay. it is stretchable. Again clothing has to work very closely with. So, we see that whatever function, most of the functions skin is uh, doing for our body, clothing has to do totally to help assist our skin. We can say it is a coat clothing has to work out as our second skin. Okay. So, and then interspecies identification. So, for different types of uh, species, we can identify based on their skin type. Okay. So, that and we will in our at this segment, we will concentrate on the reception of stimuli like touch, pressure, heat, pain as we are discussing the neurophysiology here. Okay. And other functions we will discuss and in uh, subsequent talk. Okay. So, the skin is the interface between our environment and body. Okay. So, that is the interface, it is highly stimulated and contains specialized receptors, different types of receptors are there. So, it this sense these receptors sense different types of stimuli, the stimulations are of basically three types of stimulations, one is mechanical stimulation, mechanical stimulation with the st external object normally, but when in when we are clothed our external objects become the cloth and it sends the touch, pressure, trickling or prick sensation. So, all this type of sensation it receives from the clothing okay, and it gives ultimately our comfort sensation. Similarly, thermal receptors, there are thermal receptors which sense the whether it is a warm or cold and gives signal, okay. send signal to the brain and brain evaluate and ultimately gives the sensation. And third one is that it is a damaging, so one is mechanical, then thermal and third one is damaging, the traumatic or chemical type of, it is a pain type of receptors which is extreme. In responding to this stimuli, the skin sensor generates different types of sensations like touch, pressure, pain, like touch and pressure by mechanical receptors, pain is by the uh, nosy receptor, it is called nosy receptors, warm cold by the thermal receptors. Okay. Now, if you see the locations of different types of sensors, we can see that it is a heat sensor is here. Okay. This is heat sensor, this is light touch sensor, P 
pain sensor as we have discussed earlier this is the free nerve bending goes up to the epidermis okay. and rest other sensor you will see these are located in dermis region okay. cold sensor okay. and here strong pressure sensor at the uh, little bit in the deep zone a strong pressure, pressure sensor when our body is pressed at heart then this sensor will work and for light touch th this sensor will work it is a connective tissues are there and this is the hair follicle which actually gets signal by movement of hair when hair moves this gets signal. Okay. So, this type of sensor ultimately gives signal to the night it, it, the sensation goes through the nerves then through spinal cord and ultimately through the chemical sensation it goes to the brain and brain receives all this signal. Okay. And we have discussed our in uh, our uh, psychological uh, part and brain actually try to wait actually try to evaluate the level and gives ultimate sensation. So, we will start with the mechanoreceptors which gives the mechanical sensor. Okay. So, mechanoreceptors actually interact with the external body any mechanical sensation. Okay. This is the actually these are uh, receptor respond mechanical distortions or pressure. If we touch our body our skin gets little bit distorted and that distortion is sensed by the mechanical receptors okay. and this can be found throughout the body with the hairy part of the body and also the hairless part of the glabrous skin. Okay. There are different types of mechanical receptors we will come later, but mainly four major receptors are there. Piscinens carpuscle, Ruffini ending, Meissner's carpuscle, and Merkel's nerve ending. They have their specific functions, and the this these receptors are uh, present uh, at different portion of our uh, body, but density of this uh, number of uh, sensors per unit area are different at different zone. So, if we see the locations of these four different types of sensor, major sensors are that you see the uh, Meissner's carpuscle, it is very close to epidermis, very close to the surface of the body. Merkel nerve complex, this is also very close. Ruffini's end organ, nerve end this is little bit in deep and Pacinian corpuscle it is at the deeper most out of this four okay. which means. So, you can see in this picture also different types of location. So, Meissner's corpuscle you can see that it is close to the skin here Pacinian as we have discussed it is a it is a green color it is a at the deep uh, deep portion Merkel's is also uh, close to the skin top layer and nerve endings are at the surface. Okay. So, they, they have got their specific functions. Okay. Now, we will discuss one by one their function. Now, Pacinus corpuscle it detects rapid vibration and pressure. So, this is actually responsible for detecting rapid vibration any very high uh, frequency like frequency is 200 to 300 hertz at diff, uh, very high frequency it can sense. Other corp corpuscle will not be able to sense this, this is actual specific, specifically for rapid vibration and also pressure. So, Pacini you can see its location is at the deep portion. So, if it vibrates at very high, high speed any vibration okay, that it sense and also due to its uh, in depth location it sense the pressure 
Ruffini's ending, which is responsible for detecting the tension deep in the skin. Okay. So, this uh, this is uh, it is at any sorts of tension it is uh, uh, in the skin it sends. Okay. Like uh, when we move our uh, body part, the skin gets stressed or uh, strained. So, it actually in a sense, our, suppose our cloth moves slips through the skin, it gets may be stretched. So, this type of sensation it is given by Ruffini's cell. The Meissner's corpuscle are the they are to detect the light touch. So, Meissner's uh, corpuscle if you see it is a location is very at the surface. So, that is why the Meissner's uh, corpuscle sometime it so, it is uh, called as a tactile corpuscle. It gives tactile sensation, touch sensation, okay. handle touch okay. and Merkel's uh, nerve ending is the it is to detect uh, touch and light pressure also. This two are actually it gives the touch sensation okay. and hair follicle nerve ending that we have discussed uh, in earlier picture, it actually it receives signal when our hair moves. Okay. It is a free nerve ending, it is a, it's a, a mechanoreceptor. So, hair follicle nerve ending sense the change in position of the hair and the free nerve ends sense touch, pressure and strain. Okay. So, this type of these are the major uh, nerve endings, mechanoreceptors. And if we see the presence of nerve ending, this picture it gives three major nerve endings. Markel nerve endings, it is a uh, it sends uh, pressure as we have this pressing in corpuscle high frequency high vibration okay. and Meissner corpuscle, it is a low frequency vibration or a touch. Okay. Now, the location it is a red color, it shows in the red color this is shown in green color and this is in blue color, but the when something touches okay, this the presence of the sensors are very close to each other. That means, ultimately this uh, more than one sensor gets the same signal. This when it is we are, we are touching if it is little bit higher pressure the touch sensor will also act Okay, Meissner will also and Pesnin also will act. They will give us that pressure sensor, they will give us uh, this will give us the touch sensor and at the same time some overlap zones are also there also in green uh, yellow color. That means, it gives touch and pressure and similarly for the pressure and high frequency vibration. So, ultimately this overlap an individual sensation send signal to the uh, brain. Okay. Brain evaluate and gives ultimately its signal. So, we see, so this is the different, this is the pessinine we have discussed at the higher depth. Next comes the thermoreceptors. The thermoreceptors are the sensor receptors which detects absolute and relative change in temperature. These are the receptors present in our mainly dermis zone, primarily within the safe temperature zone, which is important. Within the safe temperature zone, the thermal receptors will work, but beyond that, these receptors will stop working, and then there will be another receptors which are called we can take these receptors within the thermoreceptors which is which are called cold pain receptors and hot pain receptors. Okay. And these receptors work on constant temperature as well as at the fluctuating skin temperature. And we will see the at the fluct the sensation is very high at fluctuating uh, skin temperature. There are mainly two types of sensors. One is cold receptor and 
warm receptors okay. and if we subdivide the cold receptors normal cold receptors and pain cold receptors okay. and warm also normal warm receptor and pain one. So, like below say 5 degree Celsius below 5 degree Celsius the cold receptors stop working. Cold receptors range is typically from say 5 to 7 degree to say 35, 36 degree range. and then or warm receptors work, warm receptors works up to say few around 50 degree Celsius beyond 50 it stops working. Okay. We will discuss this issue like we have discussed the cold receptors have the peak sensitivity level around 25 to 30 degree Celsius like it starts sensing from say 5 degree or 7 degree Celsius and goes up to say 35 degree Celsius 35 or 40 degree Celsius, but peak sensation peak frequency is at around 25 to 30 degree Celsius and excited by reducing temperature when we reduce the temperature it gets excited sudden reduction means it will uh, suddenly excite it. So, this part we will discuss similarly the warm receptors are highly sensitive at 40 to 45 degree Celsius okay. and here its sensitivity increases with the increase in temperature. For cold receptors sensitivity, sensitivity increases with reduction in temperature and here with the increase in skin temperature and nosy receptors are separate uh, different segment of receptors within your uh, uh, mechanical or thermal receptors these are basically sense the pain nosy receptors are the sensory receptors which are responsible for sensing the pain like hitting the skin strong pressure or constant in touch with the ice okay a damaging object these are the different types of sensation which is received by this nosy receptors and these receptors have relatively high threshold okay, to act as warning device. It gives signal to the brain okay, it is uh, there is a some damaging uh, sensations are there and then our body due to the body physiology it takes action. Okay. Like suppose we are in um, our uh, skin in touch with a very hot object immediately our body our hand by uh, reflex we remove the heat. How is it happening? Because it sent this nosy receptors come into picture this sends signal to the to our uh, brain and it again sends back the signal to the muscle and muscle contract and remove this. So, this are the nosy receptors, but in uh, our clothing comfort the nosy receptors will uh, our uh, function is not that major. So, they react to potentially damaging stimuli by sending nerve signals to the spinal cord and brain. So, they send signal separate signal okay. and these are the different types of sensors available. Okay. The structure of the sensor this is the free nerve ending this is the one type of sensor and most of the nosy receptors are this type of free nerve endings are there. Okay. Nosy receptor will get the free nerve ending which is close to our, our uh, skin. Okay. Then another type of sensors are that encapsulated sensors okay. and then sensory cells are there and peripheral processes. Are there. So, these are the different types of uh, receptors sensor means receptors present in the skin and they get signal okay. like this is the function of nosy receptor it sends the damaging sensation ultimately it gives sent signal to the brain through the and this is the we get the free nerve ending nosy receptors which are present at the surface of the skin okay. this nosy receptors get signal okay, of the damaging one. Now, try to see the how the nosy receptors send signal to the brain. Okay. The pain 
pain receptors that is uh, nursery receptor in the skin are activated by tissue damage when something penetrates some uh, heavy some damaging sensations are there or some damaging heat is there the they sense the by the tissue da damage they get signal okay a signal travels up to the peripheral nerve these are the peripheral nerve so this signal it travels up to the peripheral nerve okay and then it goes up to the spinal cord okay this is the spinal cord and with the spinal cord the chemical messengers are there this is neurotransmitters the chemical messengers okay the chemical so, nature of the, uh, the fluid gets changed due to the nocy receptor, okay, the signal. And this the chemical messengers are released. This activate other nerves and the signal goes to the brain. And the at the brain thalamus is there, the it releases the different types of sensations. Okay. One is the normal sensation it sends, then it releases the thinking we what we think and emotional responses. So, this the nocity receptors work in this type of closed loop system and then it sends signal to the muscle and muscle get contracted or moved whatever way. The nerve endings basically these are called uh, receptors that nerve where nerve actually end the nerves end at the skin okay maybe in dermis or maybe in epidermis this nerve endings broadly if we divide one is uh, of a specific shape okay we can divide into two types one is one type of nerve ending that we have pacinin nerve ending or this type of nerve endings are of the of different specific shape. Another nerve ending which are called the free nerve ending which they, they do not have any specific shape okay. and they can sense different types of sensation, but corpuscular nerve, nerve endings are responsible for a particular sensation. Like uh, nerve ending like pacinian nerve ending it is responsible for pressure, but it will not sense the touch. But free nerve endings are of different types, okay. they do not have any specific shape. Sometime a free nerve ending may be of polymodality means it can sense the press touch, it can sense the pressure, it can sense the heat, cold. So, this type of uh, nerve endings are there. Okay. So, the corpuscular endings have small swelling okay, on the nerve fiber at the end and are responsible for different types of particular sensation okay, like touch, pressure, cold, heat, they are the corpuscular nerve endings. And if we now divide the nerve endings, this nerve endings are of different types of nerve. Pacinian corpuscle, Meissner's corpuscle, Merkel's nerve ending, Krauss's end bulb, Ruffini's ending, hair follicle nerve ending, and free nerve ending. All these nerve endings are responsible for mechanical sensation. Now, we will discuss one by one in detail their functions, how are they correlated with the clothing comfort, clothing sensation. This free nerve endings in subcutaneous fat are also there. In addition to the epidermis, there are free nerve ending at the subcutaneous fat, they are associated with the pain fiber and the projecting into the 
epididymis. This, uh, this from the subcutaneous fat, these are projected as we have discussed to the epidermis, may be associated with cold fiber or pain fibers. Okay. Now, we will discuss in detail the different types of nerve endings. Okay. So, this is the Pacinin's corpuscle, okay. Meissner corpuscle, Markel's nerve ending, Krause's end bulb, Ruffini's ending, hair follicle nerve ending and free nerve ending. So, we will discuss detail about the functions of each and individual nerve ending one by one. Okay. So, we will uh, we'll start this discussion in the next class okay. till then thank you.